I would like to thank you on behalf of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine for joining us this evening for a spectacular webinar by Dr. James Laval on the topic of inflammation. Dr. Laval will share his expertise on inflammation and highlight his upcoming workshop titled Inflammation, Managing Health and Performance on December 10th as a kickoff to the 23rd Annual World Congress in Las Vegas. James Laval is a nationally recognized clinical pharmacist, author, educator, industry consultant, and clinical practitioner and pioneer in the field of natural therapeutics. One of the nation's top influencers in legitimizing integrative medicine, Dr. Laval trains thousands of physicians and other healthcare professionals each year on the application of natural therapies in their contemporary practices. He was named one of the 50 most influential pharmacists by the American Druggist Magazine and the 2011 Clinician of the Year by the Natural Products Association. Dr. Laval founded Metabolic Code Enterprises to develop and launch his proprietary metabolic assessment platform for practitioners. Laval is also the author of more than 20 books and ebooks, including his most recently released publication, Your Blood Never Lies, as well as his bestseller, Cracking the Metabolic Code and Nutritional Cost of Drugs. Thank you so much, Dr. Laval. I will turn the webinar over to you. Great. Thank you. Uh we only have a few minutes, so I want to give you some highlights as to what we will cover in our workshop. I think it's important to understand that, that, you know, as all of us know, inflammation is a systemic process, but you really have to understand how things work uh, in order to uh, get My that. Asthma. So I want you to see this. They said they'd fix it, but it didn't make any difference at all. Well, sometimes doctors make mistakes, and I'm trying twice as hard to fix them. Using your inhaler? All the time. Go through one a week. You sure you're using it right? Do I look like an idiot? No. Why don't you show me how your inhaler works? And, and, and a lot of times, guys, that's how it works, right? We think we're doing things the right way, but if we don't look to the sources of inflammation, get grounded in good labs to understand where the chronic inflammatory processes are at, sometimes we're chasing our tail with a patient trying to get that chronic inflammatory process that, as we, well, we know, it's leading to a lot of different conditions. Uh, whether you're looking at diabetes or heart disease or autoimmune disorders, neuroinflammatory disorders and neurologic conditions, inflammation is at the center of it. And of course, as we think of this as an aging situation, you know, we're trying to get inflammation under control because it's one of the key tenets of, of aging. And of course, hormone balance comes into, into effect and stress hormones can trigger inflammation. Glucose and insulin regulation has a lot to do with inflammatory signaling. And of course, it's how do we create immune balance in individuals. These are the things that we're gonna go over in, in, during the pre-conference workshop, which is really, kind of a boots on the ground approach of what do you do on Monday to A, assess an inflammatory response and B, what do you give to correct it? A lot of it will be very, it's just straightforward, simple things that you can do for your patients. You know, and this is really what my belief is, is you know, what dictates inflammation is your metabolism and your metabolism, the way I view it, is that it's the sum total of all of the chemical reactions driving your chemistry towards health or leading you towards disease. And, and, you know, and this happens from the time you're in your mother's womb and, until today. And so your chemistry today is the expression of all of your metabolic and you know, psychologic life experience. And that's what's driving either inflammation or homeostasis. You know, and understanding the disruptors to current metabolism really leads to the strategies that can cut off excess inflammatory signaling. So what are the disruptors? How do I target them? Sometimes they're big and simple and easy to see. Urinary pH, salivary pH, all the data sets on urinary pH right now as it relates to progression of renovascular disease and vascular disorders. There's things like that that are easy to attain. And then sometimes they're more elegant markers like the oxyguanosin that's showing methylation damage. But the thing we know is both are triggering inflammatory signaling or the result of an inflammatory chemistry. So, you know, the new model for metabolic health, it's quite simple. It's a systems biology approach. It's whole body metabolism. 
It has to do with the interface of the gut and the immune system and the brain, and it's the crosstalk between all of the cells and all of the tissues and organs that is going on continually that drive you towards your endpoint of either distinct health or a distinct condition or illness. You know, and, and of course, one of the big issues, because I think everybody is suffering from a little bit of autoimmunity, our immune system's a little bit too turbocharged, is that there's a dynamic metabolic balance that goes between the milieu of the intestine and the external world, how we take our psychogenic stress on, how we uh, have environmental pollutants uh, take, take in, and then whether or not we're processing them well or not. And that creates our dynamic metabolic balance in the everyday world. It's, are we getting foods in and absorbing them and letting go the, the, the things that we need to in our intestine? Are we managing basically what we do to ourselves, the foods we eat, the stressors we're under? And then what's the environment doing to us? And if we can understand those relationships, we're going to do really well. And, you know, because it's really true, it's all about this. When we're looking at benefit risk situations, you know, it's like this mouse. Man, everybody wants that piece of cheese, but am I willing to go for it? What's the risk? What behaviors are you doing that are risky? Are you sleeping uh, not enough? Are you under a lot of stress? Are you eating too many carbs and sugars and your blood sugar's up and you're refusing to get it under control? All of these things are situations that, you know, guide you to inflammation. But you've got to really assess what's going on in the critical path of that inflammatory process. It doesn't do any good to start somebody, for example, with a heavy metal detoxification process if their urinary pH is acidic and they're demineralized. You know, they're, they're going to have a, you know, a worse experience with their detoxification. And of course, this is what it's about, right? It's about balancing your, your immune system and balancing all of these uh, inflammatory responses. So as your cortisol is either too high or too low, it affects your immune system. Um, either of those can throw off the HEA. Uh, and of course, you want to create a balance to uh, uh, the teeter-totter effect so that you have appropriate immune response. You're able to identify self and non-self, but your gut doesn't get leaky from the excessive cortisol that causes a histaminic uh, mast cell leakage which then causes a chronic low-grade inflammation that results in elevated monocytes, right? So when we, as soon as I see monocytes that are trending high, I know someone has got an inflammatory process going on in their body, and now we have to be a detective and find out what it is and why. And, uh, you know, and basically, uh, these are some of the things that we're going to go through is, is this whole aspect of, you know, every, everything from lipopolysaccharide or endotoxin, which I've talked about for quite a few years, uh, the shift of inflammation due to cortisol uh, alterations as to what goes on with Th1 and 2H2 cells and whether or not you're creating an antigen antibody responses and immune activation. And uh, this, this is what we have to control in the end for inflammation. And this, of course, is a really nice diagram that just kind of shows that as we load up the intestinal lumen, we're reacting, we're triggering that Th1 side and Th2 side of our immune system, that maintenance of tolerance starts to get thrown off. We start to create more eosinophils. We get more histaminic. We get more dermographic. We get more urticaria, um, more constipation, more diarrhea, more vaginal dryness, more arrhythmias, all those things happening because of mast cell release of histamine. And then, of course, the alterations in neutrophils. And if, or obviously, looking at neutrophils as they go low, the immune system's under current duress. And all of these things lead to tissue damage and inflammation. We're going to spend a lot of time understanding how do you fix this model. Uh, I just had an ulcerative colitis case, in, and literally in six days, they were already refractory to prednisone. They were refractory to, to, to their uh, colazole. And, and in six days, we had them from eight to ten bloody stools a day to two normal non-bloody stools a day. And it's because we understood this relationship of how the immune system gets triggered in the gut. And I'm just going through a few of these slides. I know we don't have time to go through all of them. We've only got about 15 minutes. This is the uh, emerging problem, correct? It's about food allergies in people. Look. I take somebody in America, I take them over to Europe, they eat gluten in Europe, they don't react. They come here, they react. Is gluten a problem or is it the other things in the food that's the problem? Is it the fact that Americans have had too many antibiotics 
lots of chemicals on our food, whether you look at Roundup or other pesticides that affect immune function. Uh, it, it, it's more than just the fact of what the food is. It's understanding our environmental relationship, managing our milieu, and as that relates to how we develop food intolerances. I mean, just think about it. I'm 55. We never had problems with peanut butter and almonds and and other foods, you know, kids weren't reacting and getting histaminic and getting anaphylactic. Our immune systems have become compromised. We have to unwind them and learn how to reset them. And and this, of course, is how to re, you know you know influence you know what influences epithelial permeability, things like histamine, TNF alpha, which gets re, gets excreted obviously through uh, excess cortisol, uh, mast cell leakage, um, platelet activating factor. We already talked about cortisol. These are things we'll visit. Uh, when we go to on our pre-conference workshop. And then, of course, there's that problem with uh, diabetics. And this is a jejunal biopsy of type 2 diabetics, stain for myeloperoxidase. People with diabetes end up triggering more inflammatory signaling because of their genetic predisposition. And so this discusses the HLA, DR, uh, DQ uh, predisposition and we'll go through that and you know there's extra steps you got to take a lot of times to calm that myeloperoxidase inflammatory signaling in the gut and your diabetic both type 1 and type 2 populations as well as your insulin resistant populations and you know let's face it one out of two people are either insulin resistant or diabetic in the United States as of the last data released uh, two weeks ago so one out of two people walking in your doorway has this problem in their gut and you have to learn how to address it uh, and, and so once again, this is just kind of the things we'll go over. I don't want to, uh, you know, kind of give away too many of the gems that we're going to have during the workshop, but it really is looking at intestinal microbiota and type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance and autoimmune disorders. And we're not just, we can, we can intellectually talk about it, but what do you do about it that works? And, and we'll talk about real life cases of very complex situations, psoriasis. Um, ulcerative colitis with inflammatory bowel disease, uh, type 2 diabetics with psoriasis. We're going to go over how do you fix them, you know, real life cases. And, uh, and this, of course, is the uh, stress model that I talked about earlier. Stress hits your hypothalamus, the hypothalamus hits the spinal cord, and then the spinal cord uh, will release corticotropin-releasing hormone, which then causes leakage of histamine from the mast cells, causing a leaky gut. And, you know, one thing to note, by, by counterbalancing your cholinergic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, you help to reduce the inflammatory signaling. So we're going to talk about strategies to reduce choliner, uh, to improve cholinergic uh, nervous system drive. So cholinergic agonists, how, how to use them, when to use them, breathing techniques, vagal tonicity, heart rate variability, all important in managing inflammation. And uh, honestly, I think that's about all the time I have. Obviously, uh, lipopolysaccharide is big for me. People have a, there's a lot of issues with circulating endotoxin. What makes that a problem, of course, is it hits toll receptors and triggers NF-kappa B, but it also penetrates the cell membrane and triggers NF-kappa B. So it triggers inflammation from the inside of the cell and at the cell surface. So we have to learn how to manage bacterial endotoxin. If you're, if you're an athlete or you have reduced blood flow, you're going to see problems with, if you're an athlete that's training long, like endurance athletes, or you, know, you have reduced blood flow, like in heart failure, uh, or you're eating a paleolithic diet, you're going to see more bacterial lipopolysaccharide, and it's going to end up triggering these kinds of issues. And then, of course, why is that so important? Because when we trigger inflammation, we trigger monocytes, monocytes trigger macrophages, macrophages attack LDL cholesterol that have become small particles because of you know high cortisol, high insulin, and now I am placking and I'm penetrating the endothelial space. Now, as the mucosal barrier goes, so goes the endothelium. And, uh, and, and, and honestly, that, you know, that's what I really wanted to get around tonight is the fact that um, we get under stress, our mood changes, it changes our heart rate, it changes our heart rate recovery, it changes our arterial 
compliance and, and, and pliability, it triggers things in the long run, um, things like insulin resistance, diabetes, hypertension, elevated cholesterol. And this is a whole body response from the brain to the heart to the kidneys to the vessels to the liver. It's all one metabolism. Where a person is at in that metabolism dictates where you need to start. That's what this uh, webinar is going to be about. And, uh, you know, and it's about calming down neuroinflammation and sympathetic overdrive. And honestly, uh, I was told I need to keep this to 15 minutes and I'm one minute over. So I will finish with this. I started with this uh, chart 20 years ago. And it's all about the fact that the diet you're on, the drug therapies you've had in your history, the type of exercise you do or not do, the environmental exposures you have, the genetics you have, the stress you have, and any kind of existing illness you have, all come together to create a central activation of the HPA axis leading to uh, shifts in cortisol, shifts in immune functionality, shifts in catecholamine response, which alters our brain signaling and sleep patterns and binds up our thyroid hormone. And it's understanding that any of these things can start for example, you could have a perfect, you know, perfect cortisol response. You meditate, you do all those great things, you eat a lot of sugar, your blood sugar goes up, you trigger more cortisol. So it's understanding that you can enter this milieu from any direction, and it's just understanding what countermeasures are necessary to get to the next step of homeostatic regulation so that you can reduce chronic inflammatory signaling. And I think I'll leave it at that. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, brief talk about our our workshop that we're going to be doing uh, at the world, uh, the world Conference, the annual conference in Las Vegas this December. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Lavelle. I'm sure our attendees could listen to you talk all day long. You, again, one of the most passionate and enthusiastic um, chairpersons that we have. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and highlighting this educational opportunity. For those of you that are new to the World Congress or come every year, this opportunity and workshop is for you. You're going to earn CME, participate in interactive case studies, engage in Ask the S Expert sessions, and choose specialty, specialty tracks just for you. Um, please register for this workshop. Reserve your spot today. My direct line is 561. 777-6807. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Laval. We look forward to this specialty workshop in Las Vegas in December. Great. Everyone have a great evening.